Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to take a look and break down table 240.6a. So the first thing we do anytime we come to a table is we read the black bolt heading to make sure that we're in the right table. It says standard ampere ratings for fuses and inverse time breakers. The reason we always read that black bolt heading is because many tables in the NEC look identical and if we're not careful, we'll end up in the wrong table. So what this is, is the standard ratings for fuses and for breakers. So let's take a look at it now. Reading our table from top to bottom and left to right using our black bolt headings to navigate the table. So the first thing we come to is standard ampere rating. And this table is really simple, but it's really impactful. This is the table we'll come to and choose the next standard size if we end up in a situation where our amp load does not match our overcurrent device. And I teach you all about how to make that selection, whether you go to the next size up or the next size down in my ultimate number one free electrical exam prep series. You can check it out if you go to my playlist tab on my YouTube channel. All right, so when we're reading this table, reading it from left to right, and this starts with a 15 amp overcurrent device and goes all the way up to a 6,000 amp overcurrent device. And then we have 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And you'll notice when you get to 50 amps that it starts jumping by tens. So 50 amp breaker, 60 amp breaker, 70 amp breaker, 80, 90, 100. When we get to 110, then we'll notice it starts jumping by 25s, 125, 150, 175 respectively. Then when we get up higher, it starts jumping by 50s and hundreds and even larger later on in the game. So let's imagine that we had a 52 amp load. Well, what we would do is establish our load, establish what type of load it is, because that's going to make the difference on what we do. But when you go to this table, do you see a 52 amp breaker? Well, no, you don't. And the reason is, is because there is no 52 amp breaker, because manufacturers have to manufacture their breakers off these standard ampere ratings. I'm not saying that a manufacturer is not allowed to do this. That's up to the manufacturer and the NEC. But, because I've seen, you know, odd breakers. But with that being said, these are the standard ones that you must size your loads and your wire by. So let me give you an example. You had the 52 amp breaker. Well, would we put it on a 50 amp breaker or would we round up and put it on a 60 amp breaker? Now, I have to recommend that you don't repeat anything in these videos, but I teach you all about it in my 10-week series. And most of the time, you're going to round up to the next breaker, but that is not a universal concept, and you need to make sure you understand this and that you're qualified to make this decision before you make it. But let's imagine in our scenario, we can round up to the next standard size. So we had a 52 amp load. We round up to the next size ampere rating of breaker. And in this case, we would select a 60. However, when we go to size our wire, we need to make sure that our wire at least covers the known load. So we need to make sure that that wire at least at a minimum covers the 52 amp known load. And that's also a more involved concept that you can learn all about in my free 10 week prep series. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and this is how you read and interpret Table 240.6a for your standard ampere ratings for fuses and inverse time breakers. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I've dedicated my life to help you become everything that you can be in life and in the electrical industry. If there's anything that I can do to ever help you, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.